Hi, my name is Titus Lunter, and I am a concept artist and illustrator from the Netherlands. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to change the time of day and the mood of an illustration. Let's go. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to change the color of your image using match color. Now, what you need for this is your original image and a reference image. It helps if your original image is broken down into various parts, the foreground, the background, and your main topic. Then you can take your reference image and sample those using the marquee tool, cutting them out and pasting them in. We'll be using them in just a second, as you can see me do here. I created a layer for the sky reference, now a water reference, and I'll do the same for the tower. And as you can see, I also have my water and sky and tower layers. Once you have this all set up and ready to go, keeping in mind that the values of your sample layer, the one that you take from the ref image, as you see me doing right here, are close to the values of the layer that you want to replace in your original. So if it's dark, make sure that the sample is dark as well, etc. Then I go to match color, which for me is a shortcut set to control shift M. You select the source, which is the PSD that you're working in. And then you select the layer that you want to replace. You can tweak the values where fade makes sure that you can kind of adjust how intense you want the replacement to be. Same for the saturation of the color. Note that this is a kind of quick sketching kind of way to changing the atmosphere. So you will need a little bit of tweaking like I'm doing right here with the levels layer. I create a new adjustment layer, levels. I then click Alt or hold Alt and click in between the layers to clip it to it, creating the clipping layer that you can see right now. And I'm using a gradient to kind of map out quickly where I want the levels to come through, keeping my lights light and my darks dark. This is a balancing act that you will have to do for all the layers in your image. This is why it's easy if you keep it nice and simple with foreground, midground, and background, or in my case, water, sky, and tower. Now, as you'll see me do here, because it's not a perfect method, I sometimes create regular layers that I then clip to it to paint back in some of the details that were lost or paint out some details that are no longer visible in my new light setting. Here I go to the sky layer and I create a new color layer, which I set to the blend mode color because some of the colors went a little bit too far apart from my reference. Photoshop match color will do its best to match the colors and the values to your reference image, but it's not perfect. So here, because I'm close enough, I will just create a new color layer, grab a nice big soft brush, sample the colors from my reference image and paint it back into my original image. I try to keep this as loose as possible, keeping an eye on both the image as well as my thumbnail up in the navigator. It's okay to go back and forth a lot. Here you see me going back to the reference image and kind of sampling the exact color that I want, keeping in mind that Painting in the color will not change the value. So some colors by nature will be darker and others will be lighter. So if it doesn't quite look right, create a new hue and saturation layer that you set to completely gray so you can see if your color or your value is lighter or darker or correct. Here I do the same for the water. The original reflection was based off of a completely different color, so it's not working exactly as I want to. So I'm just grabbing the color that I want and pasting it back in or painting it back in. Now it's not giving me the exact result that I want, so I'm creating a levels layer to just brighten it up a little bit more so I can see the values. Now I'm gonna mask out the shadows where the reflection of the tower is, making sure that it preserves some of the details in the highlight of the water, as you see me doing right here. 
you should use all the tools at your disposal. Level layers, hue and saturation layers, color layers, and so forth. Here I do the same where I create a color layer for the tower, having previously painted on a normal layer. I'm grabbing the sky color and I'm painting that in on the highlight. This tower is taking on a little bit of the last remnants of light coming in, which are reflected in the sky. So taking that sky color and putting it back in gets me really close to where I want to be. Now there are a bunch of artifacts visible, some of the black lines that are not doing anything, which is a remnant of the previous tower that I cut out. I will fix this in just a moment. Remember, this is a sketch-like approach. We're trying to get a feel for what it would look like if we had painted it this way. So if we want to go back in and redo it, we kind of know what we're aiming for. Here you'll see me paint out some of the artifacts that remain. I'm not too worried about it. I'm, I'm trying to keep it a little bit loose. Again, I understand that this is just a sketch-like process to, for me to get a feel of how this would look. And match color is absolutely perfect for this. It is a really powerful tool for you to use. Now all that's left is just some finishing touches. I look at my reference again, see what my shadow color is to make sure that I don't go too dark or too light, really get that right kind of shadow feel on there. And it is quite dark in this case. I wanna make sure to preserve that. And losing some details is totally okay. And there you have it, replacing atmosphere using match color. All right, if you thought that was fun and you wanna know more and follow my entire process from the start of the design of a building all the way to the end, you can follow my online course at Domestica.